of that bag of blueberries was just picked this morning. The other half was picked yesterday by OGK. And I just want to show you that berries are kind of a pain in the ass. And the reason why I say that is it took maybe, I don't know, it, it took a while to pick half of that bag. I was out there this morning doing it. And you got to pick them twice because you bring them in and then you got to kind of go through them one at a time to make sure, you know, you get rid of the duds. So you try to do a good job out there when you're picking them. And, you know, maybe one out of every six, seven, ten goes into the chicken run. And then you come back in, you got to pick them again. Um, I am thankful that I have them. But I'm also going to be thankful when the season's over because I am just about picked out, y'all. I want to move on to something else. You know, getting a, cu a couple of cucumbers is easy. Going through and taking an hour to pick a couple hundred berries, it's like, oh, you say. I'll tell you what it does do. It gives you a whole new appreciation for the food that you eat. No doubt about it. And as I'm cutting the firewood out there, it's giving me a whole new appreciation for what's going to heat my home this year, this winter. So, anywho, just thought I'd share that. Oh, yeah, none of this goes to waste. I'm going to bring it out to the chicken girls, and they're going to love it. As soon as they see me come out, they get all excited because they know there's a good possibility that I may be bringing them food. You think they never ate before, and that's pretty much all they do all day is eat. All right, excited ladies. I have some berries. <laughs> Knock each other over for the berries. I'll eat every last one of them. They don't care what color it is. They don't care how soft or how hard it is. They'll eat them all. Of course, I don't want to leave the, the chicks out. Yeah, there was enough where all of them could get some. Because as you can see, somebody's still bullying the little girls. But the little girls are getting big. So, oh, hey, chill out. You're not getting any more. Hello ladies. Now they just kind of chill out and hang out in the coop like that. It's so funny. Look at them. One uh, Rhode Island Red and one Bard Rock just chilling. Come on girls. Oh hey, hey, there's food. I think they like the berries too. What do you think? And that's odd because the biggest chick is staying in the coop and not bothering with it. Here or him, we're not sure. Although they have a tougher time eating these. The bigger girls just, boom, swallow them whole. Girls got to break them apart. I really think those barred rocks are way more beautiful than I thought they were going to be. I love the coloring. Hey, look who just came out. You snooze, you lose, kid. That's the way that goes. Yeah, they're busting them up and eating them. But the big girl slash possible boy doesn't seem all that interested. So what are we looking at here? Well, do you remember in the video a couple days ago I showed you all of the basil leaves, the bay leaves that we had drying out on the towel? Well, a couple days into it, I said, you know, we have a dehydrator. Why don't we use that? And then I thought, well, we have a solar oven that we can dehydrate in. Why don't we use that? So I set up the solar oven yesterday, put the leaves in for, I don't know, less than an hour. It was full sun. It was bright. It was beautiful. It was hot. Dried those suckers right out, put them in the little uh, magic bullet blender. And that's what we're left with. All those leaves down to that for the dry basil. Again, guys, gives you a, a enhanced appreciation for food, how much work it takes to harvest, process, uh, food, and then how little you actually get for the work. You know, I could buy this in a store for pennies. You get a whole, a whole jar of it for a dollar. Hmm. <laughs> just, just want to point out the amount of energy that actually goes into producing the food. Maybe that's why our ancestors didn't have weight problems like we have. Maybe it's one of the reasons is they had an appreciation for what it took to actually grow the food. Okay. All right, gang, here's the aftermath from the tree cutting. That's a bunch of wood over there, a bunch of brush there, and a lot of that brush I'll be able to chip up with chip. 
and some of you guys have said, hey, invest in a chipper. I have a chipper. Uh, it's just, you can't use it for everything, guys. It, it takes, it says up to three inch branches and that's stretching it. So I got to use small branches in, if they're straight, great. If not, man, it, it could really turn into a huge job. And when you have this much brush, in order to mulch all that up, it would take me forever and a day. So I'm going to pick and choose what I'm going to use to mulch. The rest I'm going to burn. I will try to use the ashes in the garden as well. So I'm not going to waste it. And I got a whole bunch of rounds over here that I need to turn into usable firewood. I'm going to use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took another trip over to Harbor Freight. We got the five ton log splitter. It's electric. I didn't want another engine to have to deal with and change oil on and blah, worry about carburetors and whatnot. So it was relatively inexpensive as far as log splitters go. $300 uh, with a 20% off coupon. I walked out the door for like $253. Oh, and I got one of the freebies from Harbor Freight. You know how they're good for freebies. I think they got a uh, headlamp and some microfiber towels. Also got some bolt cutters because I can't find my angle grinder and I got to make those tomato cages and I can't believe I survived this long without bolt cutters. So I have a pair of 24 inch bolt cutters and I'm going to use that to make my tomato cages today. So come on along. It's a little bigger than I want it to be. Ooh. Heavy wood, let's see if this splits. Look at that. Look at that. It's like a glove. Get it right in there. No, not quite. It's just about. Where this is gonna save a lot of, a lot of energy. We gotta get some gloves on and some more safety gear. Nervous in the service, buddy? Yeah. That's stringy. It's stringy and it's wet. It's only a day old. I would imagine if it was dried out a little bit, it might work a little easier. I would imagine if it was a smaller round, it would work a little easier. I'm going to cut it again. Let's cut it again. Dude, I can even flip these again. That was a big round. I gotta get this stuff dried out, guys. I'm hoping to be able to use it this winter. And this is gonna go a long way in helping us achieve more energy independence and sustainability, heating with wood. At least most of our heat, I'm hoping. We'll see. 
I got a lot of hours in front of me, a lot of work in front of me. It's a good thing I got a 13 year old kid that really is excited about helping out. Come on, give it a shot, boy. You're doing it, you're really doing it. Easy peasy, right? Easy peasy all in one home school. Haha, <laughs> good job. Okay, guys, just a side note. Even though the box says that this is a 12 amp piece of equipment, I plugged it into a 15 amp circuit and it kept blowing the circuit, kept blowing the breaker. So I had to bring it up to the shop. I plugged it into a 20 amp circuit and she worked a okay as you saw in the prior clip. So I got to get out the chainsaw and I got to start cutting up my rounds to about 20 inches or so. This says it'll take up to 21 inches. Maybe I'll cut them 16 inches. I think that's more standard. Um, I think that's the standard size anyway. But I'll start cutting them up and little by little I'll chip away at this wood. Little by little I'll chip away at the brush. And hopefully here in a couple of weeks I'll get all that finished. In the meantime, I'm building some tomato cages because I'm done trying to stake them up with any type of rope, twine, what have you. And I'm going to try to build these once and be done with it. So I already built two of them. And um, I have some rebar here because I saw a couple of videos where people use that to stake it into the ground. But again, I can't find my grinder and that bolt cutter will not cut through that rebar. I haven't attempted it, but it just seems way too big. I guess I'll give it a shot here in a minute before I uh, just, just say no thanks to the whole chore. But these take, I don't know, 10 minutes a piece to make for me so far. I'll probably get better as I keep doing it and get faster. But the idea is to make it once and then never have to worry about it again. I could reuse them every single year. That's the plan anyway. Baby dozer. Check it for high school. I don't believe I'll find one, but we think that I will find it. That's pretty neat. What a sweetheart of a fellow that Mr. Stump was. He grinded my, th my two, three stumps down. I, he actually got another one for me for like 25 bucks, which was cool. And I commented on this. I saw it on his dashboard. Went in doubt, emptied the magazine. I kind of laughed and said, oh, that's pretty cool. He goes, man, you want it? I'm like, oh, no, that's cool. That's fine. He rips it off of his dash. He's like, here, take it. <laughs> uh, so now it's up in the shop. Sweet. Bye, Mr. Stump. All right, he left me with a mess, but I've been cleaning it up with old Wiley Coyote, making short work of that. He made short work of the stumps. Let's get busy. Sitting out back on the screen porch, chilling out, watching the thunderstorm roll through, being treated to nature's treat, fireworks display. And there's just a ton of lightning bugs that were out here too. Pretty cool. Pretty good gusts of wind, lots of rain, the garden's got to be loving it. Pretty good lightning going on out there too. Oh, you just caught one of those lightning bugs. Before it started raining, the yard was just full of them. See if we can catch any cool lightning strikes. Well, <laughs> not lightning strikes, just cloud to cloud lightning. <laughs> I'm fascinated by it. 